Good morning, church, and welcome to our online service. This is Resurrection Sunday. We're celebrating Jesus is alive. He did not just die on the cross for our sin, but He rose again. He triumphed over the enemy, and He lives forevermore. My name is William, and I'm glad to bring this message this morning as we remind ourselves that we are serving a living God. This morning, my theme my title is called, I am walking to. I'm walking to. When we see someone do something good and, you know, it's, it's effective, we want to do it as well. And when we follow that person, I almost want to say it's a monkey see, monkey do effect. This is what Christ did. Christ walked out of that grave, out of that tomb. And we can too. Before we start, let's just pray. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that we can celebrate, remember that you still live and you still reign in our life. You are the resurrection and the life. And this day we want to celebrate it, Lord. We are so happy with joyful hearts, Lord. We can testify, we can glorify your name because we're not serving a dead God or statue, or an idol, we're serving the one who rose from the dead. And therefore we can have life, and life in abundance as well. I pray that you would bless this message, and bless this day, and bless the hearts who receive it. In thy name I pray. Amen. You can turn with me to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 14. 1 Corinthians 15, Verse 14, and it says, And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and our faith is in vain. Thank the Lord that we serve a living God. And I want to I wanna exaggerate this to, a, to an extent because He lives and He lives forevermore. There's a song that says, because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Whatever the circumstances might be, He walked, the tomb is empty. He walked out of the tomb. A pastor once said, if there's a road before us and it leads into two and there's a guy who's dead and one who's alive, I'm going to follow the one that's alive. And therefore, with our faith, I don't want to place it religion, but with our faith, we know we serve a living God. God had a plan for us since the beginning of time. He had a plan. He said, let us create man in our image. And when he created man, his design was so that man would serve him. And in the beginning, God was the Word, and He had a plan for our life. It says in Galatians 4 verse 4, And when the fullness of time had come, God sent Jesus Christ to die for our sin, so that we can believe in Him and also live through Him. And it says in the Word, In Him we live and we have our being. He is alive, and therefore, whatever we face, we can face it with this, that Christ is not dead. What would our message be if Christ were dead today? We wouldn't have a message. We wouldn't have power. But He rose up out of that grave. And the same power that raised Him from the dead now dwells in us. Ephesians 1 verse 4 to 5 says the following. And it's in the ESV version. He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and blameless before Him. How can we be holy? How can we be blameless? Because we were born with sin. In love, He predestined us for adoption. Now this adoption process was the cross. He had to come die on a cross, but also be raised to life so that we might have life and when we confess Jesus Christ as King of our heart, we are saved. That's what it says in Romans 10, verse 9 to 10. He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose 
of His will. This is God's perfect will. That we might not just dwell in the world, but that we would know that we are ambassadors. We are of God's. We are from heaven. It says in in Ephesians 5 verse 1 that we should be imitators. We should be His footprints. We should be His blueprint. We should be His prince on this earth. Romans 3.23 says that all have sinned and all fell short to the glory of God. And this is why Christ had to come, lay down His life. But He rose again and this is, uh, I almost can't fathom this passage in Romans 5 verse 6 to 8. And it says, for a righteous man I might die. For a good man, I'm not too sure. But Christ, but God showed His love for us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ came and He died for us. That's the love that He has for us. Yes, God sent His Son to come die. But He also, today we celebrate not His death, but His resurrection. He is alive forevermore. May this resound throughout all time it resounded. And it will still be our song on our heart. That Jesus Christ is alive. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Therefore, every sinner now has a place. Now has a a bridge. Christ made a bridge for us. To be reconciled with God. Hebrews 4 verse 15 to 16 says, For we do not have a high priest. We don't have someone who can forgive us. We don't have someone who is righteous. Who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, our sin. But one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. And this is where it comes in. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. That we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Every one of us were born sinners. But now the sinner can approach with boldness, with confidence. We can approach the throne of grace. And what's so heartwarming for me is that (laughs) he is alive. He rose up. And therefore, when I approach his throne, I can also rise out of my circumstances. I can also rise up. And just glorify His name because the joy of the Lord is my strength. He's alive. And therefore I know that I can also be alive, whatever my circumstances might be. Because He's alive, I can look to the things that's ahead. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 22 says the following. I'm here right now. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. We were born sinners. You don't have to teach a child how to sin. We were born with sin. But now we have the decision to take up Christ and say, Yes, I believe in your name. I confess with my heart and I believe that you are Lord of my life. And then he gives life. Just like Lazarus was dead in a grave. Jesus spoke the words in, Laz- in, 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 in John 11 verse 44. It says, the man who had died came out. And I want to speak this over your life. The person who had died came out. His hands and feet still bound with the linen strips. And his face wrapped with cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, let him go. That's what Jesus did. When he rose up out of the grave, he was unbound. Jesus says, unbind him, let him go. And I want to speak this over your life. That that anything, all fear, anxiety, your failures of your past that still haunt you sometimes, 
that it would abound now in this minute, not in my name, but in Jesus' name, because he frees the slave and he frees those who were trapped in a grave. Therefore, like I said in my title, because he rose up and he walked out of that grave, because he spoke over Lazarus' life, that he could stand up and walk out of that grave, so he says that we can also stand up and walk out of that grave that we once were in. There ain't no grave that could hold his body down. Because he stood up, raised to life, walked out of that tomb, we can walk out of our sinful nature. We can walk out of our past into this new present, into this new future that God has designed for our life. And that's to adopt us into his son and daughter, to be his children. In my ending I want to go to 2 Corinthians 5 or 17. And it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And this is what we're celebrating today. The new life that Christ gives. He does not only give life, he gives it in abundance. He gives us eternal life. Maybe... This message is for someone who says, I need to repent. And I need to remind myself that Jesus Christ lives. It's the biggest miracle recorded to this day. Like I said in the beginning, if there's no resurrection, our preaching is in vain. Our faith is in vain. But we serve a living God. And therefore, I want to encourage you to leave sin, to leave the shame behind leave it give it to God because he says just like the tomb is empty with all the linen there with everything that was unbound that the cloth and everything that once held him it's in the tomb leave it there when Jesus called his disciples especially when he called Peter and his brothers Andrew he said leave your fishing nets follow me Let us leave behind all the past things and take up the new self. We are therefore a new creation. There's a song that says, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I live, but Christ who lives within me. I have a second chance in life. My future is open wide because I know Christ lives within me. Christ lives within me. Therefore, whether I face a valley of dry bones, He can put life in it. God is the way, the truth, and the life. And this morning, in exception, we celebrate His life. Let us close our eyes. Lord, thank You that You rose up out of that grave. The tomb is empty. You walked out. And God, because of you who live now, we can also walk out of our failures, of our past, everything that once held us captive, we can be free. We're not slaves to sin. We are free because you said that we can go and be free. You healed the blind. You healed the sick, Lord. You set the captives free. We believe that this blind man within us that sometimes have grown strange to your voice. We stood afar, Lord. But this morning, we want to come close. Draw us near to your heart. May we hear that your heart is pounding. You're a God who's alive. And we celebrate that this morning. Thank you for your life, Jesus. That you hung on a cross, you died. But Lord, that we can celebrate your life, the resurrection, our preaching, our faith is not in vain. For the biggest miracle of all was when you rose out of that grave and you walked into our life. And now we have the opportunity to glorify your name. And we praise you for that. Amen. May the Lord bless you. And may we always remember 
His life in our life. That He does not give us a rock when we ask for bread. That He will always be the provider. That He will always be there for us. Whether what we may face, He is the one who says that I will give because I'm your provider. And we can know that. We're not praying to the ceiling. We're praying to a living God who listens to us. And may you be blessed and enjoy your week further. Bye-bye.